In this lesson, we're talking about microscopy. We are still in unit one and we are still in topic one. Okay, there are syllabus dot points that are relevant. Remember, we have a mandatory prac in this uh, particular unit, uh, making slides and doing some calculations. Okay, cells vary in size greatly. Okay, and microscopy is a way to observe the cells doing what they do or just in their formation or shape or structure. So until the discovery of the microscope, most, if not all, of cellular biology was theorised um, and only until it was able to be observed could we actually confirm most of those theories. So being able to see increasingly small objects means that we needed new scales of measurement. And here are some of them. We are used to centimetres and millimetres, but this one here is a micrometer or a micrometer. You sometimes hear it called and these ones are nanometers. These are, there are a thousand micrometers in a millimeter and a thousand nanometers in a micrometer. Now, like light microscopy is our main focus, pun not intended, um, and we would have seen these before. We would have seen these types of things where we have an eyepiece lens, we have objective lenses, we have our movable stage where we put our slide, and we have a lot of other, other little bits and pieces as well. Um, but we are, I'm just going to delete some of these, sorry. We are mainly focused on the light mic microscope, but that doesn't mean there aren't better ones available. Uh, electron microscopes work uh, by pushing a large stream of electrons uh, and they interact with the sample. And because of the way that they scatter, uh, they can then be captured and the patterns that are captured relate to the structure of the matter in the sample. They produce really high resolution images. So if we compared those two there, uh, this one being from a light microscope, we would have the same type of cell, but hugely different uh, detail we'd be able to see in the electron microscope. Right, so the comparison between the light microscope images and electron microscope images, um, you know, uh, it's vastly different. You can see here, obviously, the resolution changes the skill of identifying the organelles as well. Um, but with practice, you do get quite good at it. Um, without any practice, you can probably at least, at the very least, pick up where the nucleus is um, and some other uh, main um, organelles as well inside the cell. We'll only be using light microscopes, obviously, um, but we still need to have this uh, skill in our toolkit of basic biology skills. Our microscopy skills, our practical skills, also come along with some calculation skills. Now that not might be to everybody's taste, but it is what it is. Uh, four main skills, calculating total magnification, converting between our relevant tiny units, calculating our field of view, and calculating our actual, actual size or our magnification using images and scale bars. Calculating total magnification is the nice easy one. Um, it's taking what the uh, objective lens uh, eyepiece is, which is always a by 10 in the ones that we give you, and looking then at the objective lens and saying, okay, how much magnification have we got in there? So if we said our objective lens uh, was on a 40 times magnification, we know that our eyepiece is a 10 times, so our total magnification will quite easily be the eyepiece, I'm not going to write this out in full, multiplied by the objective lens, and therefore we've got 10 times 40, which amazingly is 400 times. So generally when you're looking down a light microscope, whatever the objective lens is, multiply it by 10 and you've got the total magnification that you need. Easy skill. Converting between our relevant units is something we often need to practice. You will have seen conversion scales like this in all kinds of maths before. If we are going from a bigger unit, say centimetres, down to a smaller unit, we know that there are more sections or more little um, parts of that centimetre made up by millimetres, so we use a multiply sign. If we're going back the other way, we are using a division sign. Now, these ones keep it nice and easy. There are 1,000 micrometres in a millimetre and 1,000 uh, nanometers in a micrometer so that makes the conversion quite easy if we tried them out right we're going from a unit that is uh, smaller to one that is bigger so we are going to need to divide there smaller to bigger right so it would be 10 divided by the 1000 knowing that we have 1000 micrometers in the millimeter which is obviously going to give us 0.0 0.01 millimeters okay please correct me if i'm wrong I'm doing this quite quickly. Uh, we have two nanometers here. Are our nanometers, once again, we are going from a smaller to a bigger unit. So we are going to divide by a thousand and we are going to end up with, what did I do before? 0.002 micrometers. This time we are going from millimeters to a smaller unit. So we are going to need to multiply. There are 1000 micrometers in the millimeter. So we are multiplying by 1000 and therefore we are going to end up with 
600, that makes sense, 600 uh, micrometers. All right, calculating field of view should be skill number three. My apologies for mislabeling that slide. So in order to do this, we need to have a think about we're looking down the microscope, we can see this round thing, and we are trying to say, all right, how big is this actually? In real life, how much are we looking at here? And this is called a stage micrometer slide. And we can find out the size of the divisions. This tiny little line in there is actually, when zoomed in, it looks like this. And we can find out uh, exactly how big our stage there is. You count the number of divisions across the diameter of field of view. So in this case, one, two, three, four, and about a half there. And you can see they've said, all right, well, if one of these represents 1,000 micrometers, then we have approximately 4,600 micrometers, which is about 4.6 millimeters. As we increase the field of view, okay, as we get the, the field of view bigger, we're actually decreasing magnification. So you're moving further away from the slide and the, and the, the opposite is true, obviously. So when we come to doing some calculations, this is straight out of your Pearson. This is some useful information. Now I'm just going to walk through the steps really quickly. You can have a look at this later on. Firstly, we need to find the magnification at the low power. Okay, so using that skill we talked about before and then at the high power. Once we have those two, what we do is we find the ratio between the high power and the low power. That ratio in this particular case is 10 and that's going to come back uh, to haunt us later on. We then need to use the stage micrometer. So like before you would say how many divisions go across the diameter of the field of view and you're going to make sure that you're working in a very useful um uh, conversion number as well there so a unit and then what we are going to do is take this and say okay we are if the magnification has increased by tenfold then what we've done is reduce remember if we're moving closer magnifying closer then we've reduced the field of view so we are dividing that by 10 which was our factor from up here so take a moment pause and have a read our final skill is using the I am triangle or the aim triangle or whatever you want to call it um, to find three different things actual size magnification or image size the image size is how big the picture is but the actual size is how much that is representing in real life so we have an example here we've got a hideous looking cell and we have a scale bar here this scale bar if I measured it its image size is one centimeter but it's actually in real life uh, you know, representing 0 0.5 millimeters, so half a millimeter. So the very first step we need to do is calculate what our magnification is when we're looking at this cell. So firstly, we can have a look at this triangle and this triangle works as follows. If we are trying to find M, we consider this our little fraction. We cover up the M and we say, okay, well, it's going to be I divided by A. So magnification is I divided by A. In this case, we know Sorry, that we are looking at millimeters. So if we go 10 millimeters divided by, oops, sorry, 10 millimeters divided by our half a millimeter, we are going to get a magnification of 20 times. That's our first step. And then we need to apply that magnification to our bigger picture. So we want to find actual size given that we only have image size. So we can cover up the A and say, okay, we're left with I divided by M. I divided by M will give us our image size. Let's do it in millimeters, which is 45 millimeters divided by 20, which is our magnification. And we will get, remember we worked in millimeters, so we're going to get a unit in uh, a final answer in millimeters. And we've got 2.25, there's one I prepared earlier. Right, lots of skills going on there. I can understand that's quite um, a bit of a, a rush in your mind there. But remember, these are the things we're trying to do. So don't focus too much on all those calculations. Have a read of what your mandatory prac requires you to do and we'll go from there.